Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on fluids in motion. In this video, we're going to work out a question I left you guys with in the previous video. I hope you guys had time to try out this question. I hope you, you read through the question and understand exactly what the question is asking us to find. If you haven't tried out the question yet, you can pause the video and try to work it out. Okay, so if you have, we can then go right ahead and see how we're supposed to work out this question. So the thing is, they want us to find two things. First, the speed of the gasoline as it leaves the hose pipe. So that is uh, pressure two or, um, yeah, the, that is the speed, sorry. They want us to find the, the outlet speed or V2. So I'm going to use V1 for the inlet uh, velocity or the inlet speed. And I'm going to use V2 for the outlet velocity or the velocity that the fluid comes out with. So here, I haven't included the diagram really. All that we're saying is, if you look at the diameters or the radius, the radar here that we're, that we're given, the inlet, uh, where's the inlet? That's here. The inlet has a larger, a larger area. So implying that most likely we're looking at a system where the inlet is something like this, and then the outlet is a little bit smaller. So we can assume this is our this is our diagram. So in this case, we're taking one to be here, and then we're taking two to be this side. So we're given a few quantities measured. So P1 minus P2 has been measured, and that is what was found. So here, if you look at it, there's no mention of elevation anywhere. There's no mention of viscosity anywhere. So because viscosity is not mentioned in the question, we're going to assume that the approach that we have to take here is going to be the Bernoulli's equation. So how do we work it out? So the first thing that we want to do is to write the equation for the conservation of energy, that is the Bernoulli equation. So the Bernoulli equation comes out as the pressure at one plus the kinetic energy. So remember, this is the work done per unit volume. But of course, they all reduced to look like this. V here is going to um, denote velocity plus the density gh at one equal to the pressure at two plus half the density v at two squared plus rho gh two. But because here we're taking it that, if that is where h is, you see that h one is the same as h at two. So because of that, this term will be the same as this term. So the two can easily be dropped because they're going to subtract out. So our Bernoulli's equation now remains as P1 plus half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus half rho V2 squared. Now from here, we, we observe that the question gives us one simple thing. The question gives us what P1 minus P2 is. This is given as 1.2 kilopascals. So from here, we want to just get what this P1 minus P2 is. So how do we get that? We have to move the P2 to the left side. So P1 minus P2, so I move P2 becomes negative. From I can also move this term to the other side. So what I end up with is, one over two, the density, the velocity at two squared minus the velocity at one squared. So from here, the question tells us what this term is. The term is 1.2 kilopascals. So where there's P1 minus P2, I can straight away put one point. I don't want to put 1.2 kilopascals. I'm going to expand it. So this becomes 1.1,000. 200 pascals. I'll drop out the units here. I'll just make sure everything comes with the right units. Okay, next up, the question says the density of this, this particular of, of gasoline is 7,000, 700, sorry, seven by 10 to the power two, which is just 700. And the units here are the kg, per meter cubic. So the units are already standard here. They match with everything else, meaning I can just get that value the way it is. So meaning now I have one, two, zero, zero, 
equal to, it's the same density here, so I can factor it out. It's really up to you guys the way you want to work out this question. And I can just leave it there. This is by 700 V2 squared minus one, two by 700 V1 squared. From here, you can simplify this equation. So there are various ways you can do it. So here you're going to have one, two, zero, zero equal to 350. Sorry, that's 350. Minus 350 here again, V1 squared. Again, V, V1 and V2 here are velocities. V1 is the inlet velocity. V2 is the outlet velocity. So I'll divide through by 350. This becomes 1200 zero, zero, over 350 is equal to V2 squared minus V1 squared. So here I can simplify the left-hand side. I don't really want to work with decimal places just yet. So I'll write this as a, as, as a mixed fraction in simplest form. So this becomes, now I'll, I'll write it as an improper fraction. And then this is V2 squared minus V1 squared. So I'm going to hold on to this as my first equation. The thing is, I have an equation where I have velocity two terms, V1 and V2, which I don't know. And the trick is, if you have one equation with, if you have one equation with two things that you do not know, then to work out that equation, you need a second equation with the same two things that you don't know. And here, Try, try to think through it, you guys. Try to think through what concept have, have we looked at so far where the two values of velocity at one point are compared to the other to, to the second value of velocity at, at a second point. So you guys should be able to, uh, to, to, to figure that one out. It's a concept that we described in detail some time back. And of course, this is the continuity equation. Okay, so now how, how does it work? So the continuity equation compares the flow rate at one and at two. So here, we want to compare the, the flow rate at one to the flow rate at two. So the continuity equation just says the flow rate at one is equivalent to the flow rate at two. How does it work? Well, here, we have, we wrote it in two forms. We had, um, of course, I'm not going to derive this equation again. If you haven't seen the video where we came up with the continuity equation, I'll leave a link in the description, but it ended up as V rho, rho, rho one, V one. No, this is not V, sorry for that. So we have rho area one, V one is equal to rho two, area two, V2, but if row one is equal to row two, then it means that the equation simplifies to become this. So here V is for velocity. So it's the cross sectional area of one times the velocity at one. This is the inlet part is equal to the cross sectional area two times the velocity two, which is the outlet part. So from here, the question is asking us to find the outlet velocity. So we can eliminate one, we can get the expression for V1 here. So we see that V1, if I made V1 the subject of the formula, this would be A2, V2 over A1. So from here, the question gives us a number of things. Among them, we have the radius of the inlet. This is given as one point two centimeters. We can convert this to meters easily. It becomes 0 0.012. And we have the radius R2 equal to, which is the outlet velocity. So I've swapped them, I've swapped them. So the inlet velocity R1, the inlet velocity, the inlet radius is equals to 2.4 centimeters which becomes 0 0.024. And the outlet radius R2, which is smaller than the inlet, is equal to 1.2 centimeters, which becomes 0 0.012 in meters. So from here, we can easily obtain the expressions for area. Area generally is pi R squared. So A1 
will be given by pi, the radius one, this is just, uh, where is that? 0 0.024 squared and A2 will be equal to pi by 0 0.012 squared. So if I make the substitution, B1 is equals to area one, that's area two, which is pi by 0 0.012 squared divided by A2, that's sorry, A1 divided by A1. A1 is this expression here. So I can substitute, that is pi by 0 0.024 squared and all this multiplies v2. Remember at this point, I don't know what v2 is. So it's actually the one I wanted to find. So if you guys work out this, I don't, I'm avoiding working out with uh, with decimals at this point. It doesn't matter really, but this becomes one over four v2. So this becomes my second equation. So you guys can work, can, can work with decimals, but I'm going to work with fractions because I don't want to start writing decimals, it's easy to make a mistake when dealing with, uh, with decimals. So now I'm going to work out equation one and two simultaneously. It's up to you uh, how you're going to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute two into equation one. So remember what equation one was, equation one was 24 over seven equal to V2 squared minus V1 squared. So from here where there's V1, I'm going to, to substitute equation two. This becomes 24 over seven is equals to V2 squared minus. So where there's V1, I'm placing one over four. Then here I have V2, but this has to be squared. So this comes out as 24 over seven is equals to V2 squared minus one over 16 V2 squared. These, the, the right-hand side, these are like terms, like they can simplify. So this becomes 24 over seven is equal to 16 V2 squared minus V2 squared over 16. So I can cross multiply and simplify this. I have 24 over seven multiplying 16 equal to 15 V2 squared. So I just cross multiplied here so that the 16 went to the left side and then I subtracted the numerator to get the 15 V2 squared. So from here, I want to get rid of that 15 down here. So we have V2 squared is equal to 24 over seven times 16 divided by 15. So from here, you're going to have V2 squared is equal to, so V2 squared is equal to, actually you can even say V here to be equal to the square root of 24 by 16 over seven by 15. And if you work this one out, V2 comes out as 1.91 meters per second. So this is the, out, the velocity of the fluid, which is the gasoline in this case, as it comes out on the other side. So if you go back to our diagram here, of course, the question is saying the speed of gasoline as it leaves the horse. So it's the speed that the gasoline comes out with on this part. So the speed at this particular point. So that's the one that we have found that V2 is equals to 1.91 meters per second. Okay, so once we have found the speed, the next thing that they want us to find is the flow rate in cubic meters per second. So um, you guys can try just for fun, you can also find the speed of the gasoline at this point, which is V1. We already have the expression, you guys can try it out. It should be easy to find. You should be able to find the speed of the gasoline at this point at 0 0.4 seven, eight, that's the speed of the gasoline. Of course, this is in meters per second, so as this one. So once you find um, the, the velocity of the, of, of the speed of the gasoline at the two parts, the next, the, next, the last part is the, the flow rate in cubic meters per second. So what this implies in cubic meters per second, I hope you guys are able to tell, this is the volume flow rate that they want us to find. 
And again, remember, according to the continuity equation, the flow rate at one must be the same as the flow rate at two. So you guys can try to find the flow rate at two, yeah, because that's the, you already have that 1.91. Try to find the flow rate at two. And then again, separately try to find the flow rate at one, and just try to see if if um, the continuity equation will hold here. If you find that the two flow rates are, are different, it means that you made a mistake somewhere. But if you worked it out correctly, you should be able to see that the two values will give you the same, the same value. That is for the flow rate. Okay, so for me, I'm going to use this value to find the flow rate at, at two. And then that's the one that I'm going to leave as the answer. You guys to verify our answer, you can try to do the same thing but for one and see if you get the same flow rate. Now, how are we going to work it out? Okay, so the flow rate is, they want is in cubic meters per second, meaning it is volume divided by, by time. So this is something that we have already done, obtaining the expression for the flow rate in different ways. So volume, of course, if you have something like this, it means that what you have here is the cross-sectional area, and here is the height. I'm going to take it as x, meaning to get the volume, all you have to multiply is a and x. So implying that all you have here is the cross-sectional area multiplying x over t. But x is distance, implying that these two, you have distance over time. And I hope you guys are able to tell that that is basically just area times speed. So the flow rate, the volume flow rate is given by the cross-sectional area times the speed. So if I want to get the flow rate at two, what I have to multiply is the cross-sectional area at two, multiplying the velocity at two. So remember, we already saw the expressions for the, for the area, the velocity we're just from finding it. So at two, the area is given by pi times 0, 0.0, .0 one, two squared, and this has to be multiplied by the velocity. We're just from getting the velocity, and that was 1.91 meters per second. So from here, when you evaluate this, we should be able to get the volume flow rate as 8.65 by 10 to the power negative four meter cubic per second. Okay. So this is the flow rate at the point two, and this is the answer that the question um, is asking us to find. Okay, so you guys can try to use the other point, the second point, try to get the flow rate at one, see if it will give us the same value as the one we just found here. If, if it doesn't give you the same value, then it means that we made a mistake somewhere. But of course, we expect that it's going to give the same value uh, according to the continuity equation. So you guys can try that out and see if you can give us the same value. Let me know what you find. Is it going to give you the same value? Leave a comment in the comment section. Otherwise, this is where we're going to end this video before it becomes too long. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like. And then yeah, you can subscribe to the channel if you, if you haven't yet done that. Otherwise, in the next video, we're going to work out another question. Nothing too complicated, really. So it's employing a technique that we have already looked at. So you guys can try it out in advance. I should have this video uploaded um, within the next 24 hours. So you guys can try it out, go through it and see if you can work it out. Okay, let me let me know what you find as the solution to this video in the comment, in the comment section. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next video. This was your tutorial.